Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to run through all of the updates and the kind of changes that I've been making in this large greenhouse since we really haven't been able to get a whole lot of heat in here. We've only had our small compost piles to heat the inside of our greenhouse. So we've gone all winter basically unheated in here. One thing I'm doing is using this little solar box in a different way to melt some snow for myself and fill my 40 gallon tub with water that has nitrogen in it. The snow captures the nitrogen when it creates the actual snowflake and then it's released back into your soil or contained in your water. So this sourcing of water is free. I already had this box made up and I was using it for other solar heating projects and it didn't work out that well. So I just had it on the back burner and I just started throwing snow in here the other day. I will come out here in the morning time if it's gonna be a sunny day. I don't wanna add a huge cold mass to my greenhouse if it's not gonna be sunny. Because I am relying on that sun to melt all this snow, you can see my whole box is pretty well dry where the snow is not touching. This was packed in here pretty good and it's already dry. We're achieving about 90 degrees on the backdrop in this little solar heating box. It's not even sealed 100%. This window is just laid on the top. It's got a decent seal, but it's not airtight by any means. So I've just been throwing about a bucket of snow in here at a time and spreading it out as flat and evenly as I can. So it's got enough energy to melt all of that before it gets dark here. So we got some decently warm water and it's also a thermal mass that we're holding some heat in. Before we know it, we're going to be using our shade cloth and cover all of this up we've got to get our second layer on before we can actually put our shade cloth on this greenhouse so as soon as all the snow melts on the baseboards of our greenhouse we're going to be able to throw the second skin on and get this double layer greenhouse in order and we'll just have that much more insulation we will double our insulation factor by having a four to six inch gap of dead air basically between both of our polys but we're still dealing with a random negative temperature here and there it is still february so it's to be expected but we've gotten up into some abnormally warm temperatures like today we're sitting about 38 degrees it's abnormally windy out so it's not as warm as what it would be but with this sun it is very warm in our greenhouse so we've had a pretty rough go at heating this large greenhouse this entire winter here. We really weren't ready for it. So what we've been doing as a means of heat is basically using compost. We've got this large compost pile and we pretty well add to this every time I come out here. I'll throw some more greens, I'll throw a ton of browns, I'll water it in and probably throw some wood ash. So I've been adding to this compost pile continuously for the last month now and this corner's been hot. This corner, all this compost has been warm for at least a month now and we've made it through our negative temperatures. Like I said, we've got 30s and 40s during the day and a random negative day here and there. So as we're seeing those warmer temperatures, this compost pile is being much more productive than it was when we had negative 10, negative 15 degrees at nighttime for a steady amount of time also. So that really put a hurting on us because we did not have our second layer of insulation ready. So this system pushing this air passively through into our sprouting box is an awesome idea. And I'm going to build upon this because I like what I'm doing here. It's not the prettiest little contraption I've got working here, but we've just been leaving this little door open and continually venting to the outside because this has been pretty productive at heating this up and it holds a decent amount of heat in the top. I got a couple extra layers of this poly here in order to just provide shade to these plants because it was getting darn warm in there. We were seeing high temperatures and we cooked a whole top row of plants. So I didn't want to do that again. So I got a bunch of extra poly just to provide some shade on those. Got my little fig tree holding the doors closed for me. Now this little heat sink here, we've got 85 about 85 degrees sitting on that thermometer in there because of these black rocks and this black chunk of iron and those were painted with egg paint i wanted to talk about the egg paint here so i wanted to make this and show everybody how i made it last time i did this i just showed the final product so i'm going to show how i put this together and the ratios i'm using all right hopefully everybody can see this A little dust coming out of there you can see that ground up biochar you can use lump charcoal you can use regular charcoal from the store this is basically what i'm using is some smoldered char biochar that i inoculate also this is not inoculated it is what i ground up to make the powder here i've got a little bit of water 
I've got two eggs and a dish to mix all this in. Now I've found the best method for actually breaking this char up is to put it between two pieces of cardboard and just smash it all together or use a hammer and it completely turns this to dust. You might have a few chunks, but if you're just painting rocks, that really doesn't matter. We're gonna crack one egg. Now I will say that if you're doing some real painting on a canvas, then you're going to want to poke a hole in that yolk and drain that yolk sack. See, I will just use this entire yolk and the sack because I'm just painting rocks and it doesn't matter if I have a little bit of gelatinous material or chunks in it. But this is a method that has been used throughout the years to actually paint on canvas. So I like to take my egg yolks and break them apart and get them kind of spread out before I start adding ash in. This is the consistency you want before you add a few drops of water. So we've got a little bit of water in there and we're gonna spread that throughout the whole mixture. So here we are, this is the final product. This is our pigmented paint. So here is our rock. We painted this a couple weeks ago and I've melted ice on it and it's been sitting in the dirt and I wanted to kind of show how well this paint actually works. Got a little bit of rub off on my towel, but I pretty well got that clean and it's completely black again, and we still have a black surface, and this has had chunks of ice sitting on it and melting, and it's just sat in the dirt. I just threw some water on there, scrubbed it up, and it is good to go. Now this paint is quite useful. I'm going to be able to use this multiple different ways and not just for dark surfaces. I'm going to try and see if I can't make some paint out of my eggshells because basically you need some calcium to make chalk. You can use some white chalk for your pigment. You can use a lot of different natural items. I've just been experimenting with things and looking up ideas. I was super fascinated with this egg painting idea. I've done it several times now and I've got some decent chunks in there but for the most part I've got quite a bit of pigment. This is probably the coolest painting method I've found that is all natural. We've got a ton of free eggs and we're always checking our coop but we always miss one or two or our hens will start to lay in a different spot outside the coop or wherever. We find random eggs throughout our yard every once in a while so that is a good source of free eggs for painting especially if you're just doing small projects like painting small rocks here or painting heat sink rocks or painting a bucket black even. So this method of painting with an all natural non-toxic source is amazing to me. This is something I'm going to continue using in the future here definitely. When I mixed all of this together I used about 50-50 and a little bit of water. So if you're using two eggs I like to flatten it out and then I like to dust the whole surface with like a quarter inch of the actual dust or pigment that you're using and then mix it together and then I add my water to get it to the right consistency that I'm looking for. It is very simple to do and it is free. And what I noticed in our little passive heating box here is that we were seeing about 10 to 15 degree increase in temperature in the box and drawing that through the floor to the other side of our greenhouse down there and blowing it back up and heating the other side of our greenhouse with air that is inside this box passively heating up. These rocks that I have painted are acting like a thermal heat sink also, so those are holding onto that heat throughout the night as opposed to water. Water is going to act like a great thermal battery in a thermal conductor, but when you've got a cold cloudy day and not a lot of sun for possibly a week at a time, you don't have all of that negative heat draw like you do with water. These rocks will not hold on to that long term overnight cold temperature like a big barrel of water will. So I've been using this fan because I had nothing running on my solar system. This fan was already hooked up and wired to it but it was too much for our compost heating system. It was over circulating the air and not allowing it to really transfer. This little softer powered fan, it's only a five watt fan, that is doing the job. It's slowly pushing that air in order to get good transfer of heat from the metal to air. So I've been using the fan to dry my airspace and just bounce all of the warm air around the entire greenhouse and just get a little better circulation than I had. If anyone's got any questions on anything we talked about today, our egg painting or any of our passive solar heating experiments, our John Payne composting, 
anything you see going on in here, definitely drop it in the comments below. I love to hear feedback from you guys. Everyone seems to think outside the box and we're always bouncing great ideas around. So I really appreciate that and I thank everybody for watching these videos.